This is the fifth section of chapter two on quadratics and this section is about the discriminant. Now here I've got the quadratic equation written out and I'm going to be focusing on this bit here. The bit underneath the square root sign b squared minus 4ac. Now you would have seen in a previous example or in work you've done before that if this bit underneath the square root ends up being a negative number we can't find the square root of a negative number and you get stuck you you end up finding that you actually you can't find a real number for this and you'll end up saying that the quadratic doesn't have any roots because we have the square root of a negative number well we can actually tell something about the number of roots a quadratic has and the type of roots a quadratic has by looking at this value that we get underneath a square root and this value this number that we work out here has got a special name and it's called the discriminant so this discriminant this b squared minus 4ac what it allows us to do it allows us to discriminate or separate out the different types of quadratics so we're now going to look at the different values which did this, this discriminant b squared minus 4ac could be so the first one we're going to look at is where b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero so we end up getting a positive number so imagine a positive number under here and we could be adding or subtracting a positive number what will happen then is that our quadratic will have two real roots two real roots what that means is if we were to draw that quadratic it would cross the x-axis in two places so if it was a u-shaped quadratic you get something like that and if it was an n-shaped quadratic where it's like minus x squared minus 2x squared that type of thing it would also an n-shaped quadratic would also cross in two places so we have two real roots and I'll just put dots to show that so if we work out that discriminant b squared minus 4ac and the way that we get a b and c are from ax squared plus bx plus c that's what our quadratic is going to look like and that's where we get our values from um, yeah, if it's positive we get two real roots we know that when we factorize or when we complete the square I use the quadratic equation there will be two real roots or we could use the word two distinct real roots so they're going to be different two distinct real roots okay what if b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero well actually we get two repeated roots two repeated roots what that really means is that when we um, factorize it or find the roots we'll get the same number twice so think about if this bit here is zero you're adding or subtracting zero so that doesn't make any difference to what you have here than minus b um, the total at the top will be the same you're adding or subtracting zero so you'll get two repeated roots they're like the types of questions where let's say for example you factorized it and you've got something like x minus 4 times by x minus 4 or x minus 4 squared you basically get 4 twice don't you that's what we call repeated roots now in that case we've got repeated roots if it's a u-shaped quadratic those repeated roots will show up as the quadratic just touching the axis in one place so it's just sitting on top of the axis if it's u-shaped and if it's n-shaped it's going to be just sitting below the axis and it's just going to be touching the axis in one place so it's going to be something like that and this is what we say when we have two repeated roots I guess you could say the same thing as saying that is that you've got one real root the same number repeated twice one real root so that tells us something about the number of roots and what its sketch is going to look like is it going to cross the axis the x-axis or is it just going to be touching the um, x-axis in the last case where b squared minus 4ac 
is less than zero, so it's a negative number, we're going to end up trying to do the square root of a negative number. We won't have any real roots, so we'll say no real roots. Now we use the word real because if you do further maths, you'll discover that there are things called imaginary roots, but that's beyond uh, the normal A level. So we say that there are no real roots. So what's that going to look like? Well, if I draw a sketch, it's no real roots. It's not touching or crossing the axis. I'm going to have a quadratic that maybe looks like this. So you can see it's not touching the axis at all. It goes down, but comes back up, not touching the axis. Or if it's an N-shaped quadratic, it's going to be entirely below the x-axis. It's coming up, doesn't touch the axis, and goes back down again. So the value of this b squared minus 4ac will tell us how many roots a quadratic has, where if it's got two real roots, two distinct real roots, two different numbers, two repeated roots, in other words, one number, one real root, or it has no real roots. And again, once we know the number of roots, that will help us when we're trying to sketch these quadratics. Example 13. Find the values of k for which f of x equals x squared plus kx plus 9 has equal roots. So the first thing is we need to work out what do we mean by equal roots. Or well, equal roots is the same as two repeated roots. That means that the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. So let's write down our values of a, b and c. a is equal to 1 because we just have x squared. b is equal to the letter k, so we'll use k in our working. And c is equal to 9. So that's going to go into the discriminant equation. So we've got b squared. So we've got k squared minus 4 times a, which is 1 times c which is 9 and if they're equal roots that has to equal 0 so let's see what that gives us that gives us k squared minus 4 times 1 times 9 is 36 equals 0 we can go on and solve that so we'll have k squared is equal to 36 and square rooting it k is equal to plus or minus 6 now that's consistent with what we've got here because it says values of k. So we wouldn't just want to write down that k is equal to just positive 6, because remember when we square root positive and negative, um, so k is either equal to 6 or k is equal to negative 6. So using the discriminant here, it's almost like solving an equation. Example 14. Find the range of values of k for which x squared plus 4x plus k is equal, equal to 0 has two distinct real solutions. OK, two distinct real solutions. What's that telling us? Well, that's telling us that the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is going to be greater than 0. That's when we have two distinct uh, roots when that bit under the square root sign is a positive number. Now my value of a is 1, b is 4, and c is k. They get substituted into the discriminant. So that's b squared, 4 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times by c, which is k, and that needs to be greater than 0. So we're now just solving this inequality. So we have 16, that's 4 squared, minus 4 times 1 times k, which is 4k, is greater than 0. Okay, so what we'll do here is we'll um, add 4k to both sides. So we've got 16 is greater than 4k. So from there, I'll divide both sides by 4. So I'll have 4 is greater than k. And uh, I would want to flip that around and k is less than 4. So there's my range of values. When k is less than 4, this quadratic here will have two distinct uh, real solutions. And I guess what's happening is that when k is below these values, the quadratic curve, that u-shape, is moving down 
so it's not just touching the uh, x-axis it's moving down so it's actually always crossing the x-axis so there's our range of solutions when k is less than 4 so you should now be able to do exercise 2g on page 32 of the textbook